Hi, everybody. This is Yvadi and X from The Candid Frame. Before we start, I want to remind you that I'm going to be in Texas next weekend for 4x5 Photo Fest. Uh, it's a one-day event in San Antonio in which professional photographers and aspiring professional photographers uh, meet up. There are going to be panel discussions. There are going to be speakers. Uh, there are actually some print exchanges that are happening. And I'm conducting two live interviews on that day uh, that are going to later be distributed here on the Candid Frame. But if you are in San Antonio, you can experience it all live. So if you're in San Antonio uh, next Saturday, Come out, join us, and uh, say hello. And I will also be in Miami in December for the Miami Street Photography Festival. It's about four day, uh, four day event, and uh, it's really remarkable. They have some amazing photographers that are teaching workshops and doing presentations. And I am doing my own master class uh, on a single day uh, during those those days in Miami. And if you want to sign up for that, you can go to the link at the Miami Street Photography Festival dot org or look below in the in the show notes here and uh, join us. Now, one of the things that I've been really trying to do myself is try to create interesting silhouettes and not silhouettes just for the sake of creating silhouettes, but silhouettes that take advantage of an interesting space or a background. Uh, it's, I know how to create a silhouette and no doubt a lot of you do too, but the challenge is, well, you want to do more than just create a silhouette just for the sake of making one. You want to create an interesting composition that benefits from the fact that you're creating a silhouette. And so I chose three images that helped me to sort of talk about what I'm pursuing, as well as talk about some of the technical challenges you face anytime you want to shoot uh, this kind of image. So here we have a shot by Sriranj Sridhar, uh, no XF data here. So here's one of the th things that you have to contend with when you want to create a silhouette, is basically you have to find a scene where the background is brighter than where your subject is. Uh, your subject more than likely is going to be in an area of shadow and thus underexposed. So the technical challenge here is that you usually have to override what the camera is going to attempt to do when it sees a scene like like this. What, what can happen uh, with a lot of the metering system in today's cameras is that they're going to try and give you uh, a good exposure for both, for both the highlights and the shadows. So if it sees a lot of shadow area, it will try to open up the exposure by either reducing your shutter speed, opening up your aperture, maybe even increasing your ISO or, or a combination of two or three of those. And what the result is, is yes, you get more shadow detail in terms of your subject, but you lose the silhouette that you probably were trying to achieve. So the trick here, the trick is, is that you want to bias the exposure for the highlights. And there's a variety of ways you can do that. Um, you could expose manually and take a meter rating of the bright area of the frame and prevent the camera from adjusting um, any of this, the shutter speed or the aperture. Uh, you have to make sure that the camera's auto ISO feature is enabled and you need to set the ISO manually because otherwise the camera will still try to adjust um, for the exposure uh, because it's in control of the ISO. So that's one way of doing it, is going into manual exposure mode. The other one is to take a meter reading using center weighted or spot metering, uh, meter the bright area of the frame, and then lock the exposure using the exposure lock button on the camera. And as long as pressure is maintained on that button, the exposure will not change even if the scene changes. So those are two ways that I typically will, will do it. Usually I'm using it in aperture priority mode. I'll take a meter reading of the bright area of the frame, lock the exposure, recompose, and then I'll just shoot from there and I don't have to be worried about it. If I know I'm going to be at the scene for a while, I may go over to manual exposure mode and uh, that will accomplish the, the same thing. And in such cases, when you do that, your shadows are going to go to deep black, um, especially even though your camera... Uh, most of today's cameras have a very wide dynamic range and you could probably pull out some of that shadow detail when you work on the raw file in either Photoshop or Lightroom. You're more than likely not going to be doing that. You're going to want those, those blacks to be crushed. 
And that's the case in this particular picture where the exposure is biasing all that area of highlight, midtone, but leaving the human figure in the foreground to go into shadow. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of creating an interesting silhouette. And for me, as with all the other pictures that I talk about in, the, in this video, I'm always trying to find an interesting frame. If I'm solely focusing on the human subject to the exclusion of what's happening with the background, I'm more than likely I'm not going to create a very interesting shot. And the photographer here does a really good job in terms of setting a stage that is really pleasing and interesting to look at, even without the human figure. You have the color contrast of the green and the sort of the reddish uh, doors that are there, uh, so the yellowish, goldish walls, uh, the tapestry that is hanging above the walkway, uh, the posts uh, that exist here, creating some nice, interesting uh, uh, lines of shadow. The overall scene here is really, really interesting because of the graphics, because of the colors, because of the shapes, the patterns, all of that. So it creates a very interesting stage onto which into which you introduce the human figure that ends up being very graphic because of the profile here of the nose, the lips, the chin, the hair, and all of that. So much like uh, the previous video and some of the other videos that I've talked about, finding the setting first allows you the luxury of being able to figure out, well, what your frame is going to look like. And you can compose your frame and then you can figure out, okay, when a human subject does come in, where do I need them in order to complete the image? And uh, the photographer here does a good job in placing him in this area where the profile here is really cleanly defined. If, the, if this figure had moved in a little further so that his nose was juxtaposed with this area, this whole definition here would be lost. Or if he had been positioned a little further back to the right, the definition of his face would be lost. So timing was really critical here in order to make this work. But you can see how much more interesting the scene becomes as a result of introducing the human figure and rendering them as a, as a silhouette. Those dark tones that exist not only with the subject, but within the, the shadow areas here, and to some degree in some of the other areas, the shadows play a big part in complementing everything that's happening in the highlights and in the midtones. And it's a real effective way of using a silhouette in a very interesting way. The silhouette is, is really important in this frame, but it isn't the dominant thing. It's not just about the silhouette. It's also about all the other things that I just mentioned, you know, color, shape, line, contrast, that really make the image work. Here we have a shot by Ye Min. This was made with a Fujifilm X-T2 at 1 500th of a second, F11, ISO 1600. So here you have this really interesting scene here where you have all these boats and all these ships that are out in the water. And think about the kind of tourist images that most of us, you know, take when we're abroad. And if we came upon a, a scene like this, you know, we're walking along the shoreline, we see the boats and we make the shot. And it's an interesting document because we would capture the boats, the water. If there was some interesting light, we would have that within the frame. We would have some stuff of the shoreline. We would have the reflection of the, of the sky and the water. But there would be really little to really anchor you in the shot. It would just be, you know, you would have those different elements in the frame, but it wouldn't necessarily be an interesting photograph in and of itself beyond the documentation part of it. But by having the human figure that enters the frame here, all of a sudden the shot becomes much more interesting. It takes an image that is pretty mundane, pretty ordinary, just documentary, just pretty much just a snapshot, and all of a sudden it elevates it into something else completely different. That negative space that's taken up by this human figure provides a great point of contrast to all the other elements that are in the frame. All of a sudden, the boats and the way they sort of are framed around his head become a little more interesting because they have something to play off of, that, that area of shadow. And as I mentioned before, you know, this human figure in the foreground is, is in shadow and is not being exposed by the light that's illuminating uh, the boats and the water and the scene uh, that's immediately behind him. And as a result... Uh, that human figure is severely underexposed. And Ye Min here uses it to his advantage. And you can see how, how using a silhouette really takes an image from being completely ordinary and makes it into something, I think, really effective and not extraordinary. Now, whenever you're facing a scene like this, there's a lot of stuff 
uh, that can go wrong. Uh, because the subject is so close to the camera, uh, they're going to move from left to right or right to left pretty quickly. So you really have to anticipate the moment that someone is going to enter your frame. Because if you are seeing it within the viewfinder and you press the button, you're already too late. By the time the camera makes the exposure, the subject is already off frame. So one of the things that you have to do is if you're shooting in this way and you know that your subject is going to be moving fairly close to the camera, you actually have to sort of anticipate the moment before you depress the shutter release button. You have to sort of anticipate exactly when they're going to be in the spot and press the button before they get there. And the only way to get good at that is by making a lot of mistakes, is by missing it. And and uh, I've done it plenty of times, and I don't always get it right. But when I do, I'm really, really happy. So one of the things that you may want to do if you're not accustomed to doing this is just practice. Even when you don't have the ideal subject coming into the position, you still want to take the photograph, take multiple photographs, just to figure out, okay, exactly when do I need to depress the button so that I have my figure in the exact in the exact area of the shot. You you got to make some mistakes. You got to break some eggs in order to get the shot that you really want to make. Okay, here we have a shot by Stuart Patton. This was made with a Fujifilm X-T1 at 1 550th of a second at 7.1 ISO 200. Now, here we have a, a scene where the human figure isn't as big as it is in the other frame, but it's still just as important. Um, we have the scene where he has this doorway, we have this window, we have these banners here, which I'm really, uh, I, I can, can't really discern here in the upper right hand corner what this what this is. Uh, it looks like, it doesn't look like it's English because this looks like a, a symbol of some sort. And then we have here something that I first thought was an umbrella, but it looks like it may be shadows or, or something else, whatever it is. Um, it's really kind of an interesting pattern. So here we have a shot where the shadows are really dominating the frame. Uh, there's so much visual weight uh, that exists with the shadows that they're really the more dominant element. And the bright area of the wall here and this door and this window are sort of a secondary, secondary element. But what makes the shot really interesting for me and what makes it work is the outline of this, what appears to be a woman silhouetted in this area here. Now, whenever you are seeing a scene like this, you have to be really aware of placement of elements. Now, obviously, Stuart here took some great care in terms of positioning all these elements, especially these elements that are on the edges of this frame, within the composition. Uh, he's got uh, this bright area here, but what was key is the placement uh, of these human, uh, of these people here. And them existing here really makes the image work. But imagine the shot without the, the people in the shot. You would, your eyes would bounce here, they would bounce here, they would bounce here. But by having the people here, it makes all the difference, doesn't it? All of a sudden, that human figure becomes the anchor. It becomes the place that we go to because we are naturally drawn not only to the human figure, but areas of high contrast. And we have that here, and we have that here and here, but there's something about seeing a human figure that immediately grabs our eye and pulls us there. And it really works really, it works really nicely here, even though the human, the human figure is such a small area of the frame. It's a very small percentage of the frame, but it works. And I'm not sure whether or not this is the silhouette of someone passing through or whether this is actually a shadow being cast from somewhere else. Um, either way, it really doesn't matter. I'm assuming when I picked the shot that it was someone who was moving through the frame and silhouetted. Um, which goes in line with the other two images that I spoke of. But again, this is a scene where you're biasing the exposure for the highlights and you're letting the shadows go to black. So whether you're doing that through manual exposure mode or using it uh, using the exposure lock button, uh, it achieves the same thing. The bl blacks get crushed. Uh, there's no detail in those shadows. And whatever detail was in, was in those shadows is not particularly important because you're really trying to create impact by biasing the exposure and creating that really high contrast image. And uh, I think this really works really, really beautifully. But all three of these images really sort of demonstrate this idea of finding the scene first and being purposeful about creating silhouettes that sort of complement everything else that's happening in the frame. If you just go to a white wall, 
that's bright and you just wait for somebody to walk in front of it and create a silhouette, who cares? I mean, unless that, that, that silhouette is really pronounced or the person is doing something with their hands or where the flourish is a, it provides a really fascinating, interesting gesture, the silhouette against that expanse of white wall is nothing that's particularly interesting. It's nothing to write home about. But when you find a scene or a setting that's as interesting as these three shots are, then all of a sudden the silhouette becomes a much more important element in a very graphic photograph. All right, as usual, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, if you're new to The Candid Frame, The Candid Frame is a podcast which in which I interview photographers about their work, about their career. Uh, I make them available here on YouTube, but they also are available if you visit thecandidframe.com, and you can stream it straight off the website. Uh, we also have uh, a free Candid Frame app available for Apple iOS and Android, and you'll find a link here uh, in on the website to download it. And uh, our most recent interview was with Ada Trio, who is a fine artist and photographer who did this amazing project on uh, prostitutes on the Mexican-U.S. border. She initially intended to do a project on uh, immigration, but uh, when that wasn't working out, she had an opportunity to uh, visit and photograph and interview uh, prostitutes, and the resulting images and story are really quite remarkable uh, it's heartbreaking and touching all at the same time. So uh, I recommend that you take a listen to that in whatever means that you prefer uh, to listen to your podcast and, uh, and enjoy it. And uh, if you want to submit images to the Candid Frame Flickr pool, all you have to do is go to Flickr, do a search on the Candid Frame and just ask to be added. And I'll be glad to do that. I usually get to the queue uh, once a week. So if you don't immediately get added, just be patient. Uh, I usually do it right before I record uh, the videos each week. And uh, you can join the growing community of people who are contributing some fantastic images from all over the world. So thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.